Good morning, everybody. Today, I have the pleasure of speaking to Ray Tzvi Berman. Ray, how are you doing? Ed, I am doing great. How about yourself? I'm doing great. And you and I have known each other through the AFGTG when it was just a WhatsApp group around eight, nine, ten years ago, whatever it was. And we became very good friends and I got to really know you. And I, I've always found you to be very logical and reasonable. And I've reached out to you a lot. You've reached out to me. And you have over 15 years experience selling on Amazon. And you are doing now coaching for large Amazon sellers, but it's not really a typical coaching. Um, there's uh, a lot of specific strategy um, and we're gonna discuss about it today. So tell me a little bit, what are the biggest challenges facing Amazon sellers today? Okay, so I think we, we could start with what everyone's been talking about. It's been all over the news, uh, the fees, costs, and a big question that comes up is, is it possible? Can I be successful selling on Amazon? Or my, I'm, I've had a successful business for the last 10 years and things are going the wrong way. Is it possible to, to, to actually be successful? And my answer to you is absolutely yes. However, however, there needs to be some fundamental changes in how we operate our businesses. Um, and it's, it's actually kind of interesting that we're bringing this up because four or five years ago, there was a big shift that went from selling wholesale items, regular uh, re regular wholesale, or even some people are still doing closeouts, but wholesale. Um, and then there was a massive shift into private label. When the margins on the wholesale went down, people were, were losing millions of dollars in sales. Um, and then the ones who were successful shifted over into moving to private label. And that's where the success has been for the last, since I believe probably about 2017, I could be right or I don't know about that. Anyway, what's happening now is the Chinese have come to the market. Well, there's a number of factors coming with the Chinese coming to the market, um, inflation, cost of goods going up, and we're not seeing the margins that we need and we're suffering. And I believe that there's a couple of things that need to be focused on over here. Number one is as you know, if I'm talking now to you as a owner, operator of a business or somebody who's running the department, um, running the Amazon department, it's critical that you're that you're forward thinking. You're thinking about the products that you're going to be launching or starting that pipeline of products um, of what's going to be launching in the future. If I'm finding a lot of sellers have some really good selling products, selling thousands, 10,000 units a month, 30,000 units a month that have been selling well for the last five years. But over time, as we all know, the margins go down, 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 competition comes, and all of a sudden our sales start to drop and we start to freak out. And the first reaction that I see from a lot of people is, okay, how do we get it back? What are we gonna do? And I think a, a, the first reaction is, well, we need to optimize our listings. We need to make sure our keywords are in line, listen to all the podcasts and. Uh, images and infographics and video and enhanced um, enhanced content, premium A plus content, um, different programs that Amazon's releasing. There's so many different so many different ways of optimizing listings. And what I'm finding is, is that's great, do it, but that should be 20 percent of your time. Even though those are 80, that could be the 80 percent of your business could be those products. You need to be spending 20 percent of your time optimizing and investing your your time and resource into those products. What you need, what on the on the flip side, in order to stay ahead of the curve and to be able to win and get past this bump or this hurdle or this really challenging time that we're that we're in, is innovation. Get new products down the pipe. Get new products in the pipeline. There needs to be a constant flow of products, and not just any products. You need to have products. Profit margins have to be higher than before, and this is extremely challenging. I'm not saying this is easy. But we need to start whatever in profit margin we decided that we were going to launch with four years ago. That doesn't work anymore for today. We need to increase that. We need to find a better product with a higher margin or make our own product. Um, those are the brands that are going to see the most success. Now, step number two after step number two is as the owner and operator or the, the manager or whoever you're running your business. Um, it's critical that you take a 30,000 foot view. I like to use my, that's my 
30,000 foot view of your business, being able to pull out of the business and look at what's going on from a 30,000 foot view. Way too many of us, way too many of us are spending, I put a LinkedIn poll and so many people are spending a lot of their time putting out fires. That's a waste of time. Why? I mean, we know why, but why we, we can't do that anymore. We can't afford it. Our businesses can't afford it. And what we need to be doing is pull ourselves out to the 30,000 foot and examine what's working, what's not working. Which employees of ours are performing the way they need to be? Which ones aren't? We have all these positions in the company. Are they all filled with the right people? Or some of you may say, I don't even know what all the positions are. Or I have multiple people doing multiple positions, filling multiple roles. Or, or me as the CEO, as the owner or whoever, I'm like kind of doing a little bit of everything and they're all reliant on me. And what ends up happening is, is that even if you have an amazing product and you're, you, you have a pipeline of new products coming in, if you don't have the operational, the proper operations set up to be able to support it, the chances of success are going to be very, very, very low and you're going to end up hurting yourself. And a lot of, a lot of Amazon sub businesses, including myself, when I started, I started in my basement. And when you start small, you do everything on your own. And it's cheaper that way. You don't need to hire more people. And I'm not necessarily saying you should hire more or you need to increase payroll. However, you do need to analyze what you should, what is most important for you to be spending your daily time on. Right. I mean, I think what you're saying is, and I see it too, that the operations part's got to be a fine-tuned machine for you to have a, a chance at success. Because I've also done it for many years, starting from my basement, and then I had a few warehouses. And I used to go crazy when we would double ship or ship the wrong item. And 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 that, like, that can't happen anymore. Like, you got to be, you know, I mean, a mistake can happen, like, once in five years, but very little mistakes. And otherwise, they're not going to survive on Amazon. So I think what you're saying is that you got to focus on the, on on the growth, and you got to grow, you got to focus on the innovation. But before that can happen, you got to make sure you have that lockbox, fine-tuned machine humming along, or you're dead. You're not going to survive on Amazon. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think it's um, I don't know exactly how to term this, but I think when you go to events, you go to shows, you hear people talking, and maybe and maybe next uh, next um, ASGTG we can this could be brought up. It's not fun to talk about operations and how to properly get the right employees to be in the right seats to be to maximize the efficiency of your company. What's really fun to talk about is hacks, is how to is the latest new features, the latest new softwares, the flashy stuff, the flashy stuff is good in moderation, works for some, doesn't work for others. For the most part, you're never, you're not gonna hit a grand slam with a hack. However, the what needs to be really, really focused on right now is the people in your company, is the, the, the human element. And something that we can, is a whole other conversation is a business is made up of humans and humans have human emotions and, and human feelings. And, we need our employees happy. We need them to be in the positions that they could be to be the most successful selves and, and us ourselves as well, as owners, CEOs. What makes us really happy? What is going to make us the most successful? At the end of the day, I hate to say this, but business is not the end all, right? We have lives outside. We want to be happy. How are we going to make ourselves the happiest possible? How can we improve our lives? And um, those are the two areas that I would say are the most critical areas to that for for sellers to. Um, I mean, it goes in any industry, but we're talking Amazon right now, where it's right. most important that we focus. So, focus. so it sounds like um, that what you're doing with sellers is you sort of you're not you're not giving a specific recipe and, and selling it. You're 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 contacting a business. You're taking a bird's eye view and using your common sense and your vast experience in Amazon selling and finding maybe something which obvious holes, which you won't notice while you're running the business. So what would you say was your biggest success story so far? Um, my biggest success story so far was I had a seller that I was working with who, who came in with, who wanted me to create a 
a, a, a program or a, a structure and how to launch successful products. Thank God I've had a lot of success launching products and he wanted me to help perfect that process. And we sat down and that was the goal. We kept our focus on it. And we started just to talk about personnel first. I need to know who's in the company, how things work, how the company operates. And very quickly, we found that even if we had the perfect launch strategy, we didn't have the operations behind it in order to be able to launch. And we, with the client, with this client's permission, we shifted our our goal, our our focus on our meetings, and we went towards okay, who do, who are your employees? What seats do you have to fill? What do what do you need to get done? What do you love to do? What do you hate to do? And but the next time I got into a call, he's like, "Sweet, you have no idea what I just did." And he pulls out a spreadsheet and he drew up an entire org chart with all the positions in his company that need to be filled. Some had people in them, some people didn't. And to me, that was extremely rewarding because we got out of the in the weeds, Amazon sell, the hack, launch yeah. strategy, all that stuff. It's great. And we and we went to the basics. And once we have those basics in line, everything yeah. else can streamline and come and go through nicely. And that was extremely rewarding to see a client. I didn't tell him to do it. Right. But he came to me very excited. You should have seen the smile on his face. He's like, see, look what I got. Look what I did. I'm like, yo, mm -hmm. keep it going. Keep it going. Right. Okay. So, uh, you know, I know I, a lot of people are, are, have been talking about in the groups about um, looking to grow here and looking to, they're getting pinched and they feel like they're suffocating. So I do think a lot of people will benefit by talking to you. So what, what are you offering for anyone that listens? Do this and again we're doing i'm doing this as a friend and i highly recommend ray um there's no benefit for me at all so what what are you offer personal financial benefit what are you offering to anyone that listens to this they fill out the form i mean are you charging them for the call how does it work no 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 you can reach out click on a link set up a call with me there's no charge we're going to talk we'll schmooze we'll talk about your business if we feel that there's what to do or that there's where that I can be a benefit to help you grow your business, then we'll set up another call. Right. Um, and that calls and that call is not is not is not charged either. I don't charge for those calls. Um, well, I, where my fees start to come in is down the line when it's when we crew when we set up an engagement with a longer term program, working together for a bunch of months. But initial calls, having a conversation, sitting down for a coffee, um, even if it's two to three hours, different phone calls. Um, I'm not, I'm not charging for that. That's not what I charge for. That's um, I'm only going to charge for when I absolutely know, and I'm confident that I can add significant value to your business. Otherwise it's not, that's, that's not fulfilling to me. I want to be able to do, to, to see your success. I want to make you, I want to help you be successful in any way. Right. Okay. So I love that. So we'll leave it out here. And it was a pleasure talking to you. I'm going to put your link below. So if anybody wants to speak to Tzvi, just click the link and you can find a call and see if you and Ray will see if you can help. I mean, definitely I can say from personal experience, he's he's helped me out a lot and um always a pleasure to deal with and very pleasant. So thank you so much for coming on and we'll talk to you again later, okay? Absolutely. Thank you, Ed.